And I want to say this wholeheartedly. I want you guys that are listening to listen up. I went through this phase and it was terrible. While guys were praising me and saying, man, yo, Don is a legend, bro. Man, he's, I don't know how this nigga doing it, bro. He pulling the baddest chicks, bro. Like, what the F? I was so broken inside. I kid you not, yo. There were times that I felt like I was a knife away. And I'm so serious. And even to like those experiences, like those experiences were crap to me. To the other person, whatever it was, it was. To my outside people and the homies watching, like, man, yo, he is doing, bro, he doing his thing. Mm-hmm. For me, it was so effing painful. And I was mad. And it was hard for me to admit how mad I was. I wasn't committing sins unto God, per se, but I was so mad at God at the time. Because I'm like, yo, I did it your way. I did it like, I, 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 I did it the way you said. And I was pissed because I'm like, the Bible says... That if two people obey the principle, if two people do this, then you'll give them this and you'll give them this. And your word says this. And I had to outgrow the person who says, this is what it should be like. And I started to grow into the person that says, well, this is what works. And that was the worst decision I could ever make. And at some point, I don't brag about it. At some point, I started to lose myself and I started to lose like the whole body count and all that stuff. Because at that point, I was so numb that not only did I want to hurt myself, I wanted to hurt women. So mm-hmm. I was just, dr- I drug myself into a place and then it just wasn't working for me. So what I ended up doing, man, I went back to who I was when I was in the third grade and all I would do was pray. It wasn't about nobody or nothing. When we went to recess, I wouldn't go to recess. I remember getting transferred to a school that was a really bad school and I had those T.D. Jakes albums and it was just the trust and obey and the You know, praise the Lord. I would memorize the whole album. I would wake up an hour early before I went to school to memorize those albums. Once I memorized those albums, I memorized the words and I memorized the spirit that I had. So when I would go to school, the one time that I had away, they would go to recess. I would stay in the classroom. And my teacher would be like, are you sure? And I'll be in that classroom just crying, having moments with God in the third grade. So I had to get back to that. I had to forsake all women, forsake all my past experiences. So I had to get back to that. And after all of that crap, after all this whole stupid hookup culture, and after all this stuff that I was doing, I realized, yo, I want to be clean. Like no matter what, I want to be clean. Even though it's in a man's nature, as we all say, to look at a bunch of women, it's not natural. It's not natural for us to be out here just banging, 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 slanging, banging. We do hold on to um, soul ties also. And we are the seed keepers. So not just actual children, but we're the seed keepers. A soul tie is into us. It harvests into us. When we give it to a woman, she incubates it and she multiplies it. That's why she's torn. And that's why she's messed up from it a lot of times, because with her being messed up from it, it's the incubation process. So she has a bunch of men, but it had to be carried. We carry that. So a lot of you guys out here just smash and do whatever you want. Don't think that you're not, don't, don't think you're going to walk away clean either. You're going to have nightmares too, buddy. And I'll, I'll get to that in another episode, but I had to get back to myself, man. And when I got back to myself, there were a lot of women that I came across where God was just really just testing me. And he'll just be like, I'll be like, man, she looks good. I'm going to go on a date. And God be like, no. But then I'll be like, it'll be another woman. Like, I don't want to date. And then if he granted the yes, he'd be like, that's it. The date could go really well. Really well. No red flags, nothing. God like, that's it. Nothing else. Don't pick up that phone. And I'm sitting like, yo. But then it really got to a point where God just wanted me to trust him. And he told me, I remember, <sighs> he told me through other people that there's a special woman out there for you. And I was like, nah, that's bull crap. Like, ah, uh, God don't call a person to you, right? You're one of those people. <laughs> <clears throat> but I said, no, that's crazy. So what ended up happening was, it was true. It was very much true. And I didn't know this. And there are women that I passed up and there's a friend of mine um, who I, she was interested. And I just said, no, she told, he, God told me that she was for somebody else. And there were a bunch of people that came my way that God just kept saying, no, just no, no, no. I got, I moved over to playing at Pastor Norfolk's church and there was a person there. God was like, no, no. So I just obeyed. I couldn't understand, but I just obeyed. But the mm-hmm. craziest thing is the healing process started taking place in me. And the more I said no, it's like he was re, he was protecting me, but he was protecting the future of my memories. So I have really bad memories from the past, but he just didn't want me to make more. Yeah. And when I started doing that, I started going places. My aura started changing. Mm-hmm. 
And instead of me giving in, people are like, yo, I really want to be around you. Instead of me giving in, they'd be like, sure, man, you can be around me. I was like, I can't, bro. Yeah. Like, I'm not where I need to be. I'm not there. I don't know what that looks like, but I'm not there. Yeah. When I finally got there, <clears throat> I started dating. And uh, when I started dating, I got to the point where I was like, man, I'm really going to start vetting these women. So I vet these women. I even went overseas at one point and I vet these women. When I finally got to vet, man, when I got to my 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 true black queen, oh my gosh, the true definition of a black queen, y'all not the internet junkies, but when I got to my black queen, man, she went through this vetting process and it didn't take her long. We're going to put this on a different episode, but it did not take her long. We were talking for like four weeks. We saw each other twice out of those four weeks. Well, we saw each other twice out of those three weeks. That last week, we saw each other like three times. Yeah. But I knew in her spirit, I, I could sense her spirit. She was a lot, she was stoic. And it was weird because she was the one woman that I've met that even after saying these sweet nothings, after saying all this stuff, she wasn't over me. She wasn't all over me. That thing was bothering me, bro. It was bothering me bad. Listen, not easy, okay? Not easy. <laughs> It was it was bothering me, but the thing was, it was bothering me because I was using old game on a new soul. And so that old game wasn't going to work on a new soul because I thought I had to use game to get her because I thought all women can operate under the same umbrella. And even though I'm trying to get her for the good purpose of actually having a healthy relationship, here I am and uh, I haven't been in a relationship in a year. And I haven't dated in like, what, seven months or so? And I just started dating. And I'm like, bro, really? Like, I should have just went in and be like, hey, such and such, such and such. But it's crazy because she saw through it, but she could see through me and see that I had um, good intentions for her. Yeah. And I met her. And man, it's been the best thing since. We had our rough days. You know what I mean? But we now have purpose. And we 